Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. It's Casing Tuesday, and we will be making a card in just a moment, but I know when I first go live, it always takes a little bit of time before people find me. That's the way Facebook works, and that's where I'm going live. Um, so oh, I'm just going to chat for about a minute until I get a few of you on here, and then we'll, I'll start making my card. So this is an exciting week in my life, um, in my husband's life too. Um, we are buying a house this week, tomorrow in fact. Tomorrow is close day and it is so stressful because it's so much money. And uh, so today we had to um, wire transfer our um, down payment over to the bank. and. Um, if you haven't done this in a while, and I we haven't done this in like a long time because we, um, uh, well, it's nine years that we've been renting here and then 12 years um, since we um, bought before that. So it's been like about over 20 years since we've actually bought a house. And um, Nowadays, when you wire money over, I don't know, I think at the time when we first um, bought our second house, we actually did it with a check. But now everything's done, or you can do everything electronically. And they send you like all these warnings, make sure you're like, you know, um, make sure you're wiring it to the right place. And so like, I I'm just like freaking out. And um, this morning, we actually got on the phone with the lawyer's secretary and um, we worked with her to make sure that we were wiring everything to the right place and i said as soon as you guys get the money please let us know uh, because it's you know it's it's first of all it's a lot of money and then second of all you know if if it gets wired to the wrong place um, it's like a cashier's check like you it would be very hard to recover it so and it's just so anyway I think it will all go smoothly because we did it with her on the phone and my husband and I were both there and um, hopefully all the money settles in the right place and tomorrow we go and we um, in the morning we're going to check out the house make sure it's still standing and make sure that um, everything looks okay and then we're going over to the lawyer's office and I guess we're going to be signing our name for a very very long time apparently there's oodles and oodles of papers to sign uh, haven't done it for over 20 years so it's going to be crazy and uh, fun and then hopefully we'll get the keys sometimes tomorrow and uh, I can drive up to the place and actually be in the house for the first time without being supervised by my agent another agent uh, or the owners and just like really 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 take a look at the house take a look at all the kitchen spaces um, and see where all the stuff is gonna go all my kitchen stuff and um, just crazy this weekend oh, I'll just tell you one more thing this weekend we went up and um, the owners were so kind um, they were in the middle of packing and they opened their house to us they they are supposed to but usually it's done with the um, seller's agent um, but I don't know whether or not the seller's agent um, didn't need to be there or, or whatever but they um, they gave us a little tour of their house and I thought that was just so kind of them because usually you don't ever meet the seller and they showed us like the different things in the house and like how to like where the thermostat was and like some of the features of the appliances and stuff like that and I, I just thought that was just so awesome that they would do that and uh, we got to meet their dog and we got to meet the neighbor's dogs I it was I actually made me feel really good that when we were moving in uh, about the house just to get to meet the seller because usually it's like a little crazy and um, um, they like to keep the sellers and the buyers separate and um, so that was just a very unique opportunity but I'm gonna be really happy because like I feel like you know I know we're buying the house but I, I feel like until it's like yours like I have this thing like I don't want to like you know go into every corner with a toothbrush or a 
you know, whatever and, and check everything out like like that because it just my sensibility just doesn't allow me to do that. So this is going to be really cool to just be able to tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, be able to do that. And then on a Thursday, I have a chimney guy coming um, to um, sweep the chimney um, that was used. And I also have... Um, uh, a flooring guy coming and um, we're having the floors refinished before we move in and I'm told that this is such a good thing to do before you move in because afterwards it is very difficult because you have to have all the furniture up off the floor so it's not um, it's not something that typically is easy to do once you've moved in so we are doing that and then after that's done we're painting and we move at the end of the month so crazy times ahead um so if you see me um if you see me missing out on some lives i will i will keep everyone posted as to what my schedule is um this is why it's because of the house it's because i've never experienced something on this level before even though we've owned two houses before this is a different kind of deal like it's it's just I don't know if it's Massachusetts. I don't know if it's the current market conditions. You know, just everything that we've done has been on the next level of craziness. And then to add to that, I have um, our landlord who is awesome, by the way, and has treated us really well over the years. So we're helping them get the place rented again. And then we have showings tomorrow too, tomorrow afternoon. So it's like, oh my gosh, like I feel like, um, you know, keeping the house to a certain standard, you know, because I, I, I want this place to get rented again and um, packing and running a business and making sure all of the trades that are going to come in um, are um, coming in on the day that they said because we've got such a tight window and making sure we do our selections of paint and everything and, and just wow just wow i'm sorry i have to dump my journey on you guys but maybe you're interested maybe you're not and if you're not always feel free to fast forward to my actual card making because i know everyone likes a different part of what i do and i'm okay with that i i get it um so I see many of you have popped on this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna get into Casing Tuesday. Let's check out today's card. So today's card is going to be, let's, I, I've already pulled it up. Let's see, today's card. Okay, let's take a look at this layout. So we've got two pieces of designer series paper. I think one of them has been stamped on and the other is just in the back. And then we've got this opening where the greeting shows through. So I think this is actually a really nice, easy layout. If you break it down, you're gonna need two layers on top, two big layers. Um, and let's have a look at the dimensions of those layers. So um, the, the first layer, the top layer is three and three quarters by five, and the second layer is four inches by five and a quarter. And then of course, the card front measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And so it's just kind of each layer is progressively smaller. And actually those are the exact layers that I, or the exact dimensions that I used today. Sometimes I change the dimensions and sometimes I don't. So just going back to this card right here, this is very easy to accomplish. And I'm gonna show you today that I just used designer series paper on the front here because I made this card this morning. <laughs> I'll admit it. Usually I make the card either on Sundays or Mondays, but yesterday got away from me. Um, it was another crazy day. So what, what the nice thing is about Casing Tuesday is that it gives you that blueprint to start off with. So that front layer, I was like, what am I going to do? What do I want to stamp? And then I thought, designer series paper because we've got a sale going on right now and I wanted to use this fresh as a daisy paper it's gorgeous it's got lots of rich colors and no matter which pattern you choose it's your card is going to look lovely and instead of stamping why not use this paper in fact this front page I didn't use this one 
but it has already basically card fronts for you. So you could cut apart this page and basically like this one in the corner right here, this one has um, just, um, it, you can just cut that apart and stick it on a card. So it's just a very, very pretty set of paper. Um, and it is on sale this month along with 12 other papers. So I put the link in my um, blog post directly to that sale. So if you're interested, um, look down below, look for the link over to my blog post, and then um, either click on the banner that says June specials or go down below in the first paragraph, I believe, um, I have a link to the sale paper so you can check them out. Stampin' Up! doesn't put paper on sale very often, so it's nice when they do, and we've got some really pretty new papers in the annual catalog. Okay, I am going to switch over to my downward view, and we'll take a look at today's card and what I made. We already talked about the Fresh as a Daisy paper. And here is my card. Look at how pretty that paper is. And all I did then was just cut a hole in the paper and stamp a greeting to put behind it, add some embellishments, and then I did put the paper crooked, which I don't always do, but I think it works here. You could, you know, just nest the layers um, straight if you wanted to. I use crushed curry cardstock in the background instead of designer series paper. I do have a little kind of pet peeve when it comes to paper because like I, paper is printed so you don't, you don't always have as many patterns to use over and over again. So I don't like to hide a whole sheet of uh, designer series paper just for a little bit to peek out. So I opted to use cardstock instead and I use Crush Curry because this greeting says wishing you the brightest birthday and I think um, yellows are really bright and I thought it just it flowed with the energy of the card. So I really like the way this came out. I'm gonna show you how I made that. Um, what else can I talk about real quick here? I use the Cheerful Daisies bundle and I only use the label and I use the greeting out of here. Um, maybe we should, I didn't stamp on the inside of this card. So maybe what we'll do at the end is maybe do a little stamping on the inside and um, I'll show you how you can kind of add a little um, uh, extra to the inside of the card so it, it matches a little bit of what's on the outside of the card. Okay, let's get started. Um, just let's talk about the real the layers real quick. So this I did a tent fold um, so the fold is up at the top of the card. So this started out um, it was an eight and a half by 11 and I cut it in half. Um, so it's 11 inches by four and a quarter. And then I scored it in half at the five and a half inch mark. I always like to use the bone folder to crisp down that fold. It just looks nice and professional. Then my crush curry piece is four inches by five and a quarter inches. Just set that aside for a moment. Um, and then this piece here is three and three quarter inches by five inches. So on this card, I cut a window into the piece, but afterwards I thought, you know, this die right here has this beautiful stitched edge. I thought maybe we should try and do it and do like a cutout and stick it on top. And then we can compare the two and see which you like better. So sometimes you don't have, um, I'm just grabbing a little scrap piece of paper here. Sometimes you don't have um, like a stitched layer. It's just a punch shape, like in the original card, it's just a punch shape. So then I think it would make more sense to put it behind because it gives it a little bit more, um, like, you know, like the window layer, if that might look cool. So um, let's do it this way around. And I'm gonna use Early Express, so I'm picking up on the darkest color on the paper. It's nice to use a nice dark color on paper um, with a greeting so that you can really see the greeting if you want it to stand out. I'm using white because white draws the eye to it. 
All right, let me grab, I think, you know what? I think I'll grab my mini machine. I did, I did put on um, my supply list. I did put my the full size machine, but you can, if you want a mini machine, they um, are available online too. Um, this, it, the mini machine is about half the price of the big machine, but it doesn't take all dies and embossing folders. So you're a little bit limited, but sometimes when I have a little piece, this the little die, this is just an easier machine to bring out. So let's have a look at the plates right here. Normally they advise you to use the number one plate. My machine is a tight machine. So if your machine is tight, if, if, it, if it doesn't wanna run through, then switch to your number three plate. It comes with your machine. It's normally used with embossing folders, but it's a little thinner than the number one plate. So you can use it as an alternative base plate. So I'm gonna put the number three die down. And I think you, I've talked about this before. I also have my a boho machine, the boho colored machine, and that one is fine with the number one plate. So it just really depends on your machine. You'll have to see when you get it, but thankfully there's like options. You know, you don't, you 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 will be able to run it through. You just need to decide which plate situation the best. I'm going to use a little bit of this labeling and cover up tape. I have the link below after all the Stampin' Up! supplies. Um, this is basically like the top of a post-it note, you know, the sticky part. So I'm just going to just tear myself off a little tiny piece. Or if you don't have this, use the top of a post-it note. You know, I did that for a long, long time until I learned about this. And then I thought, Okay, Brenda, you do a lot of stamping. You deserve to have this on a roll so that you don't have to cut your post-it notes apart, right? So I just went ahead and, and I got that eventually. Um, but at the beginning, until you see if you like doing it that way, um, then just use a post-it note and see if that works for you. So I'm just lining this up and I'm going to put that post-it note right over top. I've got, so I've got the number three plate. I've got a number two plate, which is a clear plate, the cardstock die facing down um, the card, the, 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 the edge that has the stitching on it and stuff is down. Then I'm going to take another clear plate and put it on top. And then we're going to roll this through. I need to get it to the rollers. Otherwise it will not roll through and we'll roll, roll. And see how nicely that went through. Um, I did not like my machine for almost a full year until what happened? I, it went on sale. And then I was like, what am I going to do? I, I can't promote this because I didn't like the way it rolled through. And then someone told me about changing the sandwich and it changed the way I felt about the machine. And now I have no trouble promoting it because it works. So you just need to figure out whether the number three or the number one plate is the one that you need and i talk about it every single time because i don't know who's new who might need to know about it and i don't want anyone to get frustrated okay so you can already see that it's going to look a little different because it's got a little stitching on it and that's what i want to do so we'll take some glue here and we're just going to add this label I'll, I'll do like kind of the same distance so we really can take a look and see and just make sure it's straight all right okay so we'll bring in all the pieces so what I decided to do because I, I need I need control even though it's crooked so I played with my piece and I said, okay, how am I going to stick this on here so that it makes me happy? So what I did is all the corners are kind of touching the edge of the cardstock. So top right here and right here. So you just kind of shift it like this and it's shifted like that. So we'll take this and we'll just add some Tombow on here. Love my Tombow adhesive. I'll, I'll use it and use it and use it. It lasts a long time. I have like a ton of bottles in my 
I, I never want to run out of it because it's it's just such a, a, a good adhesive. All right. And then we'll stick this one and we're going to do this one in the opposite direction. And we're going to also kind of, it's not going to be precise, but you're going to kind of aim so each corner is touching the edge of the crushed curry cardstock. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And, you know, sometimes you have to look at your greeting and it said brightest birthday. So I, I didn't want to use a dark color in the background. I, I feel like that crushed curry really gives it a lot of, a lot of energy. Like it's, but yellow's a tough color for me. So, you know, if there's too much yellow in a card, sometimes I have trouble. But this one, when I see it, it makes me happy. Like the colors, they, they look good together. Okay, let's grab this bow. I tied it earlier. And this is, where is my ribbon? <clears throat> I think I put it back. Yeah, I put it back in my drawer. And this is the satin edged ribbon. And it's just a very pretty ribbon. It's nice for holidays, but it's also a subtle ribbon because it's got the cream and the metallic in it. And I think it works well here. I. I put a bunch of ribbons on here just to kind of hold up and see what I like the best. And this one really was the best. So I'm gonna take a piece of turn tape and just put it behind the loops right here. Tombow would not work for this ribbon. So I'm just giving it enough. Um, you can kind of see where my turn tape ends just kind of press it down so it adheres to the ribbon. And then you're just gonna have to play with it a little bit to find where it's gonna release on the edges. Okay, here we go. Depends, usually one, one side is, is better than the other side. So you just need to kind of figure out, there we go, which side will release better. And then we're going to just pop this on here and yeah, it's going to maybe cover some of your greeting, but you can kind of move those away and see, see the greeting. It's kind of just hugging the greeting right there. And then we're going to take some of these pastel adhesive back sequins. And I like this gold color right here. So let's see, I'm gonna grab the little spatula end on your take your pick tool. I'm I'm trying to love my take your pick tool. I got so used to the piercer, um, but now it's retired and I just kept using the piercer, but I'm gonna embrace this new product. I started using it last week. And let, I like the little spatula end for picking things up. And then I'll just add a couple these guys see it's working pretty well actually with the sequins um, right here okay two little sequins and one big sequin and you know they don't you don't see them very well when you are put the cap on here you don't see them very well just like this you probably have a trouble hard time seeing them but what happens is when you move the card around they catch the light and look kind of pretty and so that's all there is to making this card very simple because i'm using the designer series paper and if you've ever had to do a quick birthday card and you're like oh no like i have to make this card and you're like so stressed and then you don't mail the card or you don't make the card because you want this perfect card just make a card with designer series paper this is so pretty and it's still a handmade card designer series paper is not cheating um so let's take a look to let's make the card a little special on the inside so i haven't even practiced this i have not used this stamp yet but i i like these little flowers here and since there's like the bigger flowers are white and if i'm stamping white on white or even if i embossed white on white it wouldn't look that great so let's grab this little stamp right here and let's play with that i'm going to put this on a b block 
Okay, let's open this card up right here. So, you know, I think we're gonna put some in either corner. Let's grab a crushed, the crushed curry ink pad. Ooh, so pretty. Let's put some flowers down here. And let's put some flowers up here. You know what? We could probably add a little bit more floral down at the bottom, anchoring the bottom a little bit. So let's go ahead, just bring them in like this. Sometimes you do things and you're like, eh, why did I do that? But uh, I think we'll just kind of play with it. It's kind of like a puzzle. Okay. So I want to create some little brown flower centers. So I was using the early espresso ink pad. So what can we do with that? So let's grab let's grab a blender pen. These um, are they have clear liquids, so you can use um, you can pick up ink and um, from your ink pad. Okay, so this one you can either go like this and squish down on your thing and create a pool of ink because our, our tops of our lids are malleable so you can grab that and what I'm going to do is just kind of do little kind of tick marks and just add this is easy enough to do I looked to see if there was a, a stamp for this but there isn't but I mean okay I don't draw and um, I can I can do this. I can add just a little bit of color with with a blender pen, right? See how how that's working? It's it's very easy. And now I'm kind of creating the look of these flowers here. I'm using about four or five um, brush strokes. Let me bend this back a bit so you can see. See, doesn't that look good? I mean, I, I think that looks pretty, pretty decent. Um, even for someone, I, I'm, I, I've never been, the funny thing is my, my sister, she's um, a trauma care coordinator and she was dubbed the artistic one. And um, she's working as a nurse and I'm the one that was not artistic and I, I do this. <laughs> <laughs> so it just goes to show you that like you just need a little bit like just a little bit of talent right I mean I can draw little tick marks right so um, there you go so you got some little flowers and now you can kind of write you know dear blah 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 dear I should say not blah 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 dear so and so you can write yourself a message or if if you have trouble coming up with words to find yourself a nice greeting to put in here and then you can put down here love um love brenda and you know it's just a nice little flow to that so i hope you like that i think uh, that was kind of fun to play with um and then once um once you're done with the color so this is just a clear color I just I use a tissue or um, you can use I've got my um, my very dirty stamping chamois here but on on an edge where it's kind of clean you can just kind of dab your um, blender pen on there and just until it runs clear again um, because this just continues to have this clear fluid in it so you don't have to designate this for a certain color. You just need to clean it off every time. Um, and then they will get stained. I don't know where my lid is. Here it is. They, the ends will get stained, but they won't, if you make sure it runs clear, it's not going to um, put that color out onto your card. It's just a little stained. Um, but these are just like really handy um, if you want to just add like a little bit of color because in this case we didn't have the perfect stamp. Um, I could have maybe used this one but it, it was just a little too big. Um, it works better for this flower. So just by having that little um, blender pen you can just kind of add some cute little floral, florals to your card. And look it just it, it matches right? It just it, it looks great. 
Well, at least I think it looks great. So I hope you like that little tip. And I'm coming over to you guys and I'm gonna read your comments. All right, I'm back. So let's talk about one little thing. I do have a host code going this month and this host code is for you to use if you order, um, especially if you order $50 because I'm going to reward you. Uh, here is my host code right here, the one that starts with the letter Z. In Canada, it's Z, but you can't order from me when you're in Canada. So I better call it Z. Um, so use this host code, spend $50, and this month, um, oh, here we go. This is what, this is my reward this month. It is the 2023-2025 in color dots and these are all our new in colors and so next month you will be getting those in the mail i am working on the thank you cards for my may orders i have not forgotten about you um and um i hope to do much better in the future once we are settled into our new home um it's just a little added craziness going on in my life right now so please bear with me i am totally good for for your gifts if you ordered from me in may um i have my uh, thank you card design mapped out and i'm going to be stamping the cards and getting them in my goal is to get them out by the end of the week um, but this is my june so these will be mailed in july so just use this coast code if you're ordering from me um, in june and um, if you are interested or if you want to know what supplies I use today look down below in the description of the video and it will have those supplies for you and I'm gonna go back in I didn't have the crush curry ink pad and I didn't have the blender pens on my original supply list so I'll update my blog first and then I'll come back in and update my description in the video so that you have links to those two products as well I haven't used blender pens in such a long time they were kind of a staple item when I first started stamping and I just I haven't used them in a long time but they are so handy you know what else they're handy for so have you ever um, stamped something and um, you didn't do a good job inking up or maybe there was like a piece of dust or something stuck to your stamp when you were inking and now you have like this this spot I don't know if I can um, describe it. Let, let me just kind of come back here. Okay, I've got a piece of... Okay, I'm going to clean this off like say... Um, okay, I'm going to take my finger and... Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm oop, I've taken... Okay, I've taken my finger and I've removed a spot of the ink. This is just as an example. Okay, so you can see how there is a like a little bit of a, a boo-boo right there with the ink and say you're doing this and and this was like um kind of a critical piece well uh, okay you can also grab ink just from the side of your ink pad and you can take your blender pen and you can bring this in here the nice thing about taking it from your ink pad versus a marker and the markers are pretty close but um the ink pad is the actual ink color so you can match it you know it's it's even a closer match and, and is this perfect um no but i just filled in that that petal and now like now you know of course that i filled it in so it might not look like the original stamp petal but i have fixed it and so this is a nice way to fix things so it's like it's a, a little fixer device as well. If you if you have that bald spot, you can kind of carefully fill it in and um, create create that look. So that's what I like to use blender pen, pens for too. Is is fixing stuff. Okay, I'm coming back over. All right, um, I'm talking. I'm talking. Um, what else? Okay, the designer series paper sale. Oh, and the starter kit special. So if you spend a lot of money with Stampin' Up products every month, like say you spend anywhere from fifty to a hundred dollars a month on Stampin' Up product, 
get the starter kit. It's like kind of like a no-brainer because the Stampin' Up! quarterly minimum is $300 and you can split that $300 up however you want during the quarter. You can spend, you know, $50 one month and $250 in the last month of the quarter. Um, or you can spend more too, You um, but it, um, you just, um, when you get the starter kit, there are no obligations. So you get the starter kit for $99. It's on sale. So you get $155 worth of product. So you're getting uh, $56 of product for free and free shipping on your starter kit order. And then after that, you get 20% off on your orders. So it's easier to get to that um, quarterly minimum of $300. I normally don't even talk about the quarterly minimum so much because um, if if you don't meet the minimum um, in in your in the quarter, um, you just drop. It's like there's there's no penalty or anything like that. So the starter kit is yours, um, but there there is a quarterly minimum to keep continuing on. Um, it's as simple as that. But it's it's just a nice way for you as a hobbyist to plug into the Stampin' Up experience because. Now you can do pre-orders um, when new catalog items come out. You get to hear the Stampin' Up! news. You get to hear what's happening in the company. Um, it, it's, you start to build yourself a little bit of community. And the main reason I have done this hobby for such a long time is because I have people around me. If it was just me doing this, it's 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 harder to sustain. But if you have people where you can show your cards to and when you can share things with, um, share the experience or share your designs, that's that's the, the cool thing. And I love my team and I do have team events every month and um, we get to know each other better because we're on Zoom together or um, I I call you or you call me or you text me and you know so we're 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 on a different level so um think about think about the starter kit if you're you're placing um those those bigger orders because it 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 just it, it kind of makes um it kind of makes sense let me pop up here this is this is my link and I'll get rid of these guys for now that's if you're placing an order, but if you want to join, that's where you join, qbsquest.com forward slash join. On that page, I also have some a bit more information about um, getting the starter kit. And if you have questions, please ask me. I would love to answer your questions if you have them. Even if I've already talked about whatever it is you're concerned about, come at me with questions because I I want what's best for you. I would love for you to get a discount on, on your products. And so this is a good way to do that. Okay, I am ready to talk to all of you guys and say hello this morning. Thank you for joining me. This is so much more fun because I know that you're here live with me. Good morning, Janine. Good morning, Cindy from Everett, Washington. And... Um, Cindy says she's so happy for me and the new house. I'm I'm excited too. I'm so nervous. I don't. I, this is just such a a bigger deal than it has ever been before. Um, so we're very excited, and um, I I'm waiting for that email today to, so that the lawyer's office um, saying you know we got your money. So um, that's kind of like the one of the biggest holdups would be if they didn't get the money because uh, we would not be <laughs> closing on that house tomorrow. So everything's kind of so far progressing as it should. So we hopefully will get that. Um, money they will get that money and so we can do everything smoothly tomorrow um nina hi nina oh i missed you this month because I, I i canceled my customer stamping night i hope to get that in order by august again i know next month is just going to be just shortly after we move and i don't even know how I'm going to be all set up and stuff, but I can't wait to see you again. Thank you for joining me this morning. Good morning, Mary. Mary's one of my newest team members. I love that she's here. Um, Cindy says, 
I say take three weeks off to move and begin getting settled in your new home. Ah, thank you, Cindy. I, I might need to do that. Like I might need to take a little bit of time off. Um, I'm trying to manage as, as best I can. Um, so I, I the the harder one are the Friday tutorials because they take me a little longer because I do I do try and bring you something original like either it's something completely out of my head or it's a design that I'm adapting so you know that that's the harder one because I I want to bring you something cool and original um, casing Tuesday is much easier and that's why I do it every week it's it's a nice way for everyone to join us you can join us over on our Facebook group too which I I forgot to mention but um, casing Tuesday over on Facebook and the link is down below for any of you who want to join us over there um, hello Marty Nalita says beautiful card thank you um, Marty says she loves the card um, and she likes it much more than the original. Ah, thank you. You know what? That's often the case, right? You can take that original layout and you can change it up. So that's the, the fun, fun part of it. It's like, you know, those makeover shows, instead of you're making over a whole room, you're making over a card much, much easier. Good morning, D. Um, Marty said, this is perfect for my youngest daughter. She loves yellow. You know, I love yellow too, but like in small doses, I find it like a hard color to work with as, as a card maker because sometimes too much yellow for some reason is, is um, pops of yellow are easier to deal with with me. So, um, and I like the way that came together with just like a little um, pop of yellow. You know what I did not do? You know what I did not do? Okay, so I'm holding up these cards. Okay, let me get them even. It's hard to do that because this is like a mirrored. Um, but get rid of that too. So um, I have one card that has the stitching on it and the other card that has the window. And I think I like the one. Oops. This is so mirrored. It's not good. You have to do the opposite of what you think. Um, so the one with the stitching on it is I think I like it a little bit better. So rather than doing a window, I if if your die layer, if your label has stitching on it, I would say use the stitching because I think it just adds the little tiniest detail, makes the card look a little bit better. I forgot about that. I was going to do a side by side comparison. Okay, um, Janine says pretty card. Mary says she really loves the paper. I do too. It's a great paper. Um, and Marty loves the little brown centers that I drew in. Cindy says, thank you. Dee says, very cheery card. Janine says, um, she uses the blender pen all the time for corrections, just as you're showing. Great. It is a great way to fix, fix problems on cards. And you don't need to have, you know, all the marker colors. You just need one one set of blender pens. The blender um, blender pens come in a set of three, so you know you you can be ready at all times. I just um, I open one up and use it until it it runs dry, um, and then I switch to the next one. Um, Marty says Brenda's team is great. Lots of fun and support. Thank you, Marty. I love having you on my team too. All right. I hope you guys have a great week. I'm going to try and get a tutorial ready for Friday. I I will let you know if I'm not able to accomplish that the next two days. I've got the house closed on Wednesday, Thursday morning. I have to be at the house at 8 a.m. Got the chimney guy. I've got the um, flooring guy. Oh, and I've got tile being delivered. I'm so excited. Um, we're um, the kitchen floor has um, these old style, um, uh, you know how they have vinyl tile right now? Well, this is before they had that clicking tile that kind of clicks together. It's, um, yeah, like I luxury vinyl tile that like clicks together now. It's, it's actually a really um, great product, but I like the old school tile so we're you know we've got hardwood throughout the entire house 
I don't think there's a place in that house that doesn't have hardwood, except for the kitchen. Um, okay, the laundry room has tile too, but um, the kitchen has vinyl. And I feel like um, we, we needed to, to do the tile. So the tile is being delivered. I hope we picked well. It's so hard to do this when you don't own the house already, but I'm like really excited Thursday. I don't know how long I'm gonna be up there. I'm probably gonna drive everyone crazy because one thing that I learned from the very first house that we built, um, which was when we were, I don't know, I think we'd been married about two years and we built a house up in Canada with a builder and we went up to that house every single day when it was in, in progress. Um, and it's amazing how you can catch mistakes and correct them right at the beginning so that it's not, um, it doesn't become something that's hard to correct. So I kind of feel like just going up every day, checking on things, like making sure, okay, did did the workers come today? You know, are we progressing? Because I've got, you know, hardwood and then I've got the painters coming in and I have a tight timeline. So I want to make sure that everything is progressing as it should so that we can get everything done before our move on the 29th. So I will be up there every day, probably driving people absolutely crazy. But I, I feel like that's that's a good thing too because you you want things done and you want them done right and um of course i'll always try always try and be polite and kind um but yeah you know you are paying for something so you also want to be you know this is what i want can you please accomplish this you know and and try and do it in a like in a i don't know like a kind manner because i think kindness goes a lot longer than yelling or um, being upset, right? And I think that's a huge thing these days where people are so stressed that sometimes they can't manage all of their feelings. So it's, if you can, it's really great to just like, you know, take a deep breath and like hopefully, you know, resolve the situation in a, in a positive manner because usually there is a way to do that. So anyway, I'm just talking and talking so chatty this morning. I am. All right. Um, let's just see. Um, oh, Marty asked me what color did we pick? So we ended up going um, our cabinets right now. I don't know if I'll paint them one day. They are kind of a light. I don't know, a light maple color. Maybe maple's too dark. It's, they are a very light color. They're not white. Um, and so I kind of wanted to counteract the warmth uh, just a little bit. So originally I wanted to do um, a gray tile on the floor, but my husband and I, I it, first of all, my husband doesn't like cool tones. He likes warm tones. And I, um, I, I like cool tones. I don't know why, but I, I, I just tend to gravitate more to the cool tones. Um, he told me one of my paint colors was depressing. <laughs> but he took it back afterwards. He's he's a really good guy. He's just like, he just likes what he likes, right? So anyway, we went to the flooring store. I pulled out the gray towel and he was like, yeah, it's a little dark for me. So then we went a little lighter. So I think we're going to be really happy. It's, it's kind of got, it's um, a very, very... Hmm. I, I, I would say it's got some gray-esque in it, but it's very muted. And then we went with a slightly darker gray grout. Um, so we'll see how it all works out in the end. I might be going, ah, what did I do? What did I do? You know, I... I can design a card, but can I design um, my kitchen? I don't know. Um, I think it's just a totally different animal. So um, we'll see. We'll see. That, that was my my first intuition. Um, and because um, right now the, the tile floor or the, the kitchen floor matches the hardwood. So there's a lot of that kind of wood color. Um, and I, I, I think it's a little too much. So we're going to brighten it up with a, a little lighter tile with a slight 
great undertone and we'll see you'll see pictures eventually i you will not be able to stop me from posting pictures once the house is mine i kind of didn't want to do that until until it was mine so it will be fun it will be fun i'm learning a lot about colors and maybe that will be a good thing um down the road for my card making you know everything that you do enhances other things in your life so um hopefully this whole experience will um will help with that we'll see all right guys thank you so much for being so supportive and um i really 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 appreciate that because this is a little crazy time and um uh, you're on on the journey with me whether you want to be or not <laughs> all right take care everyone see you soon bye bye